So before the video starts, I just quickly wanted to say that I filmed this at the start of October, so I didn't know about the new lockdown. But I wanted to upload this anyway because I feel like even in lockdown we should still be supporting independent bookshops as much as we can because obviously that's not always possible but as much as we can. So I've left some links in the description of where to find the books that I bought on websites such as hive.co.uk or bookshop.org who both support independent bookshops quite a lot. Other online alternatives to Amazon that I really like are Blackwells and Wordery who also ship internationally so they will be linked down below as well but obviously as I said I've realized that sometimes you have to buy from Amazon but let's avoid that as much as we can even in lockdown and if the pandemic ever gets a little better you might actually be able to go to these bookshops in person someday hopefully and then you can just look back at this video and then you'll know where to go so let's start the video hello everyone my name is Mia and welcome back to Brimful of Books so I just filmed a whole video and I realized that I didn't even film the intro so we're doing that now Yay! So I live in one of my favourite places in the world, the one, the only, the most hipster town in the whole world, Brighton. That's an actual thing, apparently. Um, Brighton was determined to be the most hipster city in the whole world, which is based on the hipster index, which is calculated using the number of vegan eateries, coffee shops, tattoo studios, vintage boutiques and record stores per 100,000 residents. We do have a lot of those but what we also have is bookstores. So we have quite a few independent and second-hand bookstores here in Brighton. I think we all know by now that we shouldn't be supporting Amazon anymore because they're not a very good company and instead we should make sure to buy locally more often. According to this article in The Independent, which was published on my birthday by the way, so um, I'm expecting you to make a note of that and then give me presents next year, thank you. Um, so this article said that the independent bookstores especially have taken a big hit during the pandemic and lockdown measures. Obviously all businesses have taken a hit, um, but I think it's for us book lovers, it's especially important to support our local businesses, support our local bookstores. And yeah, that's what this video is all about. Because the article I just mentioned does give quite a few suggestions for independent bookstores all over, I think, the UK and Ireland. However, they don't give a single suggestion for Brighton bookshops. So obviously I was very, very offended and I've taken matters into my own hands and I'm going to take you around Brighton today and show you all my favourite independent and secondhand bookshops. And I bought a book at every single one of these, so I'm going to be showing you them later. So come along to my Brimful of Books buys books in best Brighton bookshops tour. <laughs> Try saying that five times fast. Brimful of Books tries but Brimful of Books tries but Brimful of Books buys books in Brighton. Brimful of books, brimful of books buys books in best Brighton bookshops tour. Brimful of books buys be books in. Okay, I'm just gonna give up. Anyway, um, I hope you enjoy the video. Okay, so the first bookshop we went to is my absolute favorite. It's City Books. I used to live really close to this one, and I've spent so much time and so much money there. It has two floors and a really good selection of books. I could spend hours and hours just here, just exploring. They've got like every genre from fiction to non-fiction, classics, poetry, YA, science, feminist books, just literally everything. Um, especially books about Brighton or like by Brighton authors which I think is really cool look who knew pomegranates don't actually have to look absolutely disgusting on book covers here's just me explaining why I think the phrase books are my bag is just really stupid because if books are your bag where are you gonna put your books and what do you do if it rains huh explain that <laughs> no shade to the actual books are my bag campaign though because I think that's actually great Here's a book about why Germans do it better, and obviously I totally agree, and I am living proof of that. Next up, this one was so good, The Feminist Bookshop. I've walked past this so many times, but it's always closed every single time I've walked past. It's only open from 12 to like 5, and only on Thursdays, Fridays and Saturdays, so I've never been able to go in there, and I'm so excited to go in there because obviously they've got lots of feminist books I mean probably just fem feminist books and they also do like little events they've got music they've got 
lots of really cool stuff and I'm so excited to go in there now. It felt a bit awkward filming in there because it's quite small but oh my god I loved it so so much. The front of the store is a little plant-based cafe with a few tables so you can basically just go in there browse all the feminist books and then sit there get a coffee and just read. Um, excuse me um, am I in heaven? This is the event space in the basement where they do like readings and book signings and it was just so cute. From there it's a bit of a longer walk down to the lanes uh, to the Oxfam bookshop. As you might have guessed by the name, uh, this is a charity bookshop so all the books are secondhand. According to the Oxfam website, they grow vegetables, fill classrooms, drill wells, empower women and fight poverty. So yeah, I will judge you pretty hard if you come to Brighton and don't buy a book here. So. Thing. They had a really good selection of classics, YA, fantasy, fiction, non-fiction, pretty much every genre and they also had lots of vinyls and CDs and DVDs as well as some food stuff so basically you can get your books and films and snacks all in the same place so how convenient! <laughs> Now it's only a few minutes walk down to Dave's Comics. Uh, this is basically the comic and manga haven for all you massive weebs out there. Um, they have just an amazing selection of graphic novels in the front of the store. They have lots of pop vinyl figures to decorate your bookshelves with and they have Marvel and DC comics in the back and also upstairs and a really good selection of manga in the back as well. The next shop is just down the road from there and it's another charity shop, uh, so it's Books for Amnesty. And this one is so cool. As you can see they had lots of stuff about Black History Month up in the window and in general they just seem super welcoming and lovely. Not only do they sell secondhand books but they also sell new books but at secondhand prices. Um, yes please. <laughs> I have no idea how but I just, I love it. Again, they have a really good selection of classics, fiction, horror, fantasy, non-fiction, YA, just basically everything. And then also quite old and rare books in the back, uh, as well as really heavy art books. The one at the till said that she loved a little life, uh, and I was like, yeah, I'm so excited to cry. And then she just kind of looked at me a bit weirdly and I walked away. But she was really lovely. All the staff was just really lovely and really helpful. And then just around the corner is Raining Books. So this is a second-hand bookstore that I've never actually been to, so I'm excited to see what we can find in there. And it looks very much like your typical second-hand bookstore that is like completely unorganised where you really have to dig to find the good stuff. It was exactly like that, as you can see. The spines weren't facing you, so you basically just have to go and turn all the books around to see what they are, and it, that was just so much fun. The guy in the store was really, really lovely, and he said that the books are actually not quite as disorganised as they may seem. They are loosely split into genres, so upstairs there was mainly fiction and fantasy and classics, and downstairs there was children's, science fiction, horror, thriller, travel and politics I think. You can probably just spend a whole day in there just exploring every single book, just looking at everything and you can probably find a lot of really really cool books in there but I had to pee so I didn't want to spend too much time in there. <laughs> the last shop is a bit further away so if you're lazy and unfit like me then you probably want to take a bus uh, to the Chemtown bookshop. The Seven goes there for example. 
So this is probably the most exciting one on my list because I haven't actually been there. It's the Kemptown Bookshop and according to the website it was established 50 years ago and it's one of the coolest independent bookshops in Brighton and it's got three floors and it's got stationery and books and art prints and I'm really excited to go in there. This one was just absolutely beautiful. I think it's the most aesthetically pleasing on the list and it has also won quite a few awards. They had a really good selection of fiction downstairs and I also really loved the art prints that were upstairs and all the stationery as well, it was so cool. And all the art is also by a Brighton based artist so it's really cool that they just showcase that a little bit more. And downstairs they had children's books and toys and luckily somewhere for me to sit after this whole day of walking so much. So, those were all my favourite bookshops in Brighton. The staff in all of them was just so, so lovely and I feel like all these shops are really unique and they serve very different purposes. So I feel like it's definitely worth checking them out. I'll leave the links to all of them down in the description below. And now, on to my book haul. So, when I got home from my big bookshop tour, I was quite tired so I didn't want to film a wrap up then. So it's quite a few days later now and let's talk about all the books I got. As you saw, I bought quite a lot of books in these bookstores. It was surprisingly cheap because obviously quite a few of them were secondhand, so I got them very cheap. So it's not that bad, but still I feel like I might have overdone it a little bit. I just, yeah, I don't know. But let's go through all the books I bought. First of all, the book I bought in City Books, which was Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. So I've been meaning to read this book for so long. It's kind of this gothic novel from the 1930s about this woman who marries this rich widower dude and then she moves into his country estate. I think it's in England. Yeah, I think it's Cornwall. I could be wrong. But she moves into his country estate and then she kind of... I guess is haunted by his ex-wife. I'm not sure if that's like an actual haunting, I don't know if there's an actual ghost in the story. It could just be her obsessing about this dude's ex-wife and I just think it sounds really atmospheric and dark and creepy and I'm so excited to read this. I've been meaning to read this for so long because obviously the Netflix show was just released and I really want to watch that but I want to read the book before I watch the show so I really need to get to this quite soon. Next we've got Woman in Black by Susan Hill which I bought in the Feminist Bookshop and yeah this is a book I've also been quite excited about. I also got a little bookmark from them which I think is really cute. It just says independent bookshop and plant-based cafe and then it has their little logo at the top as well, the Feminist Bookshop and I think it's just really cute and I'm going to be using that for this book. So this is a kind of horror book about a young solicitor who goes to the funeral of a Mrs. Dablo, Drablo, something like Drablo, Drablo, um, and she is the sole inhabitant of this creepy house at the end of the causeway wreathed in fog and mystery so that sounds pretty cool and at the funeral he sees this woman dressed in all black um, who gives him this like creepy feeling of unease and like nobody in town really wants to talk about her and yeah I think I don't know if she's a ghost I guess she's a ghost and then she starts haunting him I guess that's what I'm assuming I don't really know that much about it but it just sounds so creepy and atmospheric and spooky and I just I'm so excited to read this I think I'm going to be saying that about every single book oh I'm so excited to read it and then it's going to take me like a year to read them but anyway Next, I bought The Hunting Party by Lucy Foley in the Oxfam Charity Shop bookshop. And I've been hearing so many good things about this and The Guest List, which is her other book. And I've been meaning to read these for so long. And again, I, f I feel like I've been saying this the whole time. This is very atmospheric, dark, creepy. So this is like an Agatha Christie kind of murder mystery novel kind of thing. Um, it's about a group of friends who go to this hunting lodge for New Year's and then they all get snowed in and one of them gets murdered. Obviously one of them killed someone. And I think it just sounds super, super interesting. I'm so excited to read this. I've heard so many good things about it and yeah, it sounds great. And I got this for £2 at the charity shop and I think that's just amazing. I love charity shops so much. You can find so many really cool, really cheap books there and I just love that so much. Next up we have the book that I bought at Dave's Comics which is Monstrous by Majori Liu and Sana Takeda. So this also again sounds very atmospheric, kind of dark, creepy vibes but the art style is just 
amazing. Look at that. It's so detailed and like, I just think it's absolutely beautiful. Like, look at that. Look at that page. It's just, even the cover, it's just, it's absolutely beautiful and I'm so excited to read this. So I don't really know what this is about, but from the back, um, I can tell that it's about this teenage girl who is quite traumatized after this war between humans and arcanics, whatever they are. And she basically has this like psychic connection with this monster that starts to awaken within her, I guess, or like somewhere. And yeah, then she gets hunted, I guess, for having this special power, having this connection with this monster. And I just think this sounds so, so interesting. I'm so excited. I'm gonna stop saying that I'm excited about these because I feel like I should find different words to describe my feelings. Next up, we have a very popular book that you've probably heard of. It is A Little Life by Hanya Yanagihara. I got this for £2.50 for this. And it's in really, really good condition. Like there's literally nothing wrong with it. And I got it for 250 and yes, yes. That's why you should all go to secondhand bookshops. They're so good. And I think that's amazing. I want to read this in November. I've got a group of people on Instagram who I'm gonna be reading it with so that I don't have to read it alone because uh, this just sounds very, very heavy, not only physically, but also emotionally, it is very heavy. I think it's about this group of friends. I think it's four people who like moved to New York and it's just about their lives. And they have experienced a lot of trauma. Um, the trigger warnings for this is basically its own book, really. Um, there's abuse, there's rape, there's pedophilia, there's self-harm, suicide, just basically everything. And so if you do want to read this, be aware that um, you should probably look up the trigger warnings if there's those sorts of things usually trigger you in books because I feel like this one just has everything um, but it does sound just really interesting and it is very popular and I usually don't like reading books just because they're popular however I do feel like this one just sounds really cool and I just want to know what it's about and if it's too heavy for me if it's too emotionally draining or whatever then I just DNF it but um, yeah I'm going to read this in November, hopefully, if I can get through it because it's very big. Next up, we have the book that I bought in Raining Books, which is Duma Key by Stephen King. So I recently read Pet Cemetery, also by Stephen King, and I just really, really liked it. And now I just need to read more of Stephen King's books. And I know, Beth, I will read The Institute eventually. It's on my list. I'm going to get to it. But... Anyway, I bought another one that I probably will never read because apparently that's what I do with Stephen King. I just buy them and then I don't read them. I don't actually know that much about it. Um, all I know is that it's about this guy who gets into a really bad accident and his memory sort of is messed up after that. And then his marriage suddenly ends and it's like all these bad things. And then he decides to move away to Duma Key, which I think is in Florida, something like that. It's like this beach town, I guess. And there he meets these people and then stuff happens and it's like creepy. I think it's a horror. It might be a thriller. I'm not sure. With Stephen King, I can never quite tell because you always think that every one of his books is a horror book, but they're not. So I don't know. But it sounds really interesting. And yeah. Lastly, we have The Little Friend by Donna Tartt, which I bought in the Kemptown bookshop. Uh, now, I recently read The Secret History, I don't know if you can see it right there, <laughs> in my last reading vlog, which you should watch, by the way, um, and I absolutely loved it. It was so good, and I just loved Donna Tartt's writing, so I really want to buy all of her other books, and I decided to buy this one and not The Goldfinch, which is her other book, because this one fits my copy of The Secret History quite well, and I thought they'd look really cute together, and yeah, so that's why I bought this one. So this one is about this boy who was found hanging from a tree so again very very dark very dark setup for a story <laughs> and then 12 years later his sister wants to find out what actually happened to him because this murder is still unsolved later on and then yeah she just gets into some weird stuff again it's atmospheric it's creepy it's dark i just think it sounds really really good that's all the books i bought on my little trip through brighton and I'm actually quite happy with this. Um, they're all, as I said, books that I'm really excited about. They're all very sort of dark, atmospheric, spooky books. And I think hopefully I will read them throughout October and November. Um, 
maybe December, but I think that's more Christmassy. I think Christmas is more wholesome, and I feel like spooky books are for like October, November, when it's just starting to get like dark and spooky outside. So yeah, I'm gonna be reading these hopefully very soon. So that was it. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope if you ever do find yourself in Brighton, you can look back at this and just see some really good suggestions for some really cool bookstores to go to that aren't Waterstones. Um, even though the Waterstones in Brighton is also quite nice and I do like it, but um, that's not what this video is about. So I hope you can take some of my suggestions and visit some of these lovely places. I think the best thing about independent and secondhand bookshops is just that they're so much smaller and so much more personal. I feel like these people actually talk to you and they're actually interested to find out like what you're interested in. They can suggest you really cool books if you talk to them more. And I think it's just, it's so lovely. I think I love going to these bookshops and I hope you will too. So uh, see you next time. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and all that stuff. And yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye.